Hey y'all, it's Melissa at Twin Oaks Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. Welcome to our place. And we're headed back into the meat bird production barn. Gonna upload this video calling it broilers the day after the last day. So it was so much fun to do a series on raising our last flock of meat chickens and sharing that on our YouTube media platform. We raised Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens for poultry production and in that series on the broilers we got to take a video of them from day one the first day of flock production to day 45 the last day for that flock of production and upload those to YouTube and show you the growth of a flock from the time hatch to harvest from the time the Cornish Rock Cross chickens were chicks that are golf ball size with legs to the time they are finished meat birds and they're like football size with legs. So uh, the last time prior to when I'm recording here that I was in the meat bird production barn was when we recorded broilers day 45 and after we recorded that we finished with loading our chickens for going to the processor. So in Broilers Day 45 video, viewers got to be in the meat bird production barn with us on the last day of production when we were putting the chickens one at a time into live chicken poultry transport crates and loading those crates onto a livestock trailer. And we had about 70 birds that needed to be loose in the trailer. So you got to see them being carried one at a time to the trailer, being loaded in and after that video was shot, we finished loading the birds, turned off the barn light, closed the barn doors, closed up the trailer, and got on the road because my husband and I needed to have the broilers at the processor, which is about an hour and a half away from home for us. We needed to have them there between 6.30 and 7 in the morning. So we left about 5. Our grown sons, nearly grown sons, had helped us with loading them and they were all headed to work, uh, you know, about between seven and eight in the morning. So they got to head back in for about another hour of sleep after we loaded up poultry, but we were on the road. And so now I'm headed back into the meat bird production barn. Gonna take you right in here with me, but just taking a look in the barn in this video, taking you in here with me um, to just take a look in the barn, kind of reflect back on this flock and kind of look ahead to the next flock actually we are um it's october 7th mm, is that right yes it's october 7th 2023 and uh we have raised about 1250 cornish rock cost meat chickens this year this calendar year so we have one more flock we scheduled one more processing date for november 30th for 100 chickens. So uh, we have those scheduled for a hatch date, I believe around October 19th. So they'll be actually moving in here in about 10 days. And and uh, here we are, you know, really about three weeks into fall, into actual autumn. And this is for us in rural Southeast Ohio, this is really the first day that's really felt like fall. We've had temperatures kind of hovering in the 80s in the afternoons, has been dipping down into the 50s overnight, but uh, the weather kind of changed actually um, on Broilers Day 45 on October 6th, and so it cooled down quite a bit, so it's only like in the 50s now. So we're going to have, uh, looking ahead, we're going to have a whole different experience with the 100 birds moving in. Um, for flock seven of 2023, the ones that'll move in around October 19th, because this, this flock that we just finished, we had pretty mild, warm temperature conditions. And basically temperature conditions that were more or less in the bird's comfort level uh, for the for the majority of their production cycle. So with this flock that will be coming, you know, we, we'll have uh, some planning and, and probably putting into into place some uh, different confinement measures and supplemental heat measures in here in the meat bird production barn for them because we're going to be looking at temperatures around 50s and 60s and probably overnight dipping into uh, the 40s and maybe high 30s and so that's really cold actually for meat chickens and they they don't uh, especially the first three weeks of their lives they don't regulate their own temperature 
from internally enough to be able to stay comfortable and to be successful for poultry production. So we will have to help them with that. So we're gonna look in the barn here. I do wanna take a look at the overhead light. During production of this, this last flock, we did have a question about our overhead lighting. And so shout out to you, Fidel. You had asked about the overhead lighting. We did get a reply out to you, but I wanted to show that overhead light that is in our meat bird production barn at some point and, and we didn't get to do that. So I'm gonna do that right now and we'll tell you how the numbers finished up on flock population for us and on production costs for us on the flock that we just finished that we did the series on, you know, broilers day one, broilers day two, broilers day three. And you can actually go back if you if you didn't follow that series or haven't seen it yet, you can find it on our YouTube channel, Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. And you can go back and you can see those birds from day one to day 45 and watch them grow. And it is amazing how rapidly Cornish Rock cross meat chickens do go from hatch to harvest and are ready to process into poultry. And, and without production agriculture, without livestock production operations, we don't have a source for wholesome and nutritious meat products. That's where meat comes from. Uh, it can com come from sources like deer hunting. It can come from small animals. Like to me, poultry is a small animal. It can come from, from meat rabbit operations, but comes from production animals or or from hunting that's that's how we get quality meat and i i do work hard at our youtube channel as part of a way to get that message out there to people we are living in an age where there are folks who can take clumps of cells to a lab alter them enhance them make them uh, what they call immortal and allow those to grow and reproduce basically infinitely in a bioreactor and then harvest that product from there and call it meat. It's not the same. It's not the same. We want to get that message out there. For example, with poultry, real chicken only comes from real chickens. Real meat only comes from real animals. And it is, it's wholesome for us as a food source and we wanna get that out there. So we have an initiative that we created as a household here that we call Heart Local Ag and that encourages folks to connect to farmers for wholesome foods. So we hope that you will source as much of your food locally as you possibly can. So just a, a look at some of the things that, that we're uh, taking into consideration here as we have ended one flock and we'll proceed to a second flock. We are going to take a look at this light fixture. So I call this a fixture, but it is more like a light bulb actually, because it it is one unit up there where you see these panels and this light. This is one unit that screws into a socket where you could like we could screw a normal light bulb into this socket so this light fixture unit actually screws up into that light bulb socket just like a regular light bulb would and this this unit has like three panels that are like adjustable appendages and you can see you know the LED lights on those and it just is um it's just like screwed in like a light bulb to that light socket. And then that, that uh, light socket is just on a single switch, a single on off switch. So when that is on, it is super bright. And so I don't have a brand name or even a, like a description name to give you. In fact, I believe that my husband more or less stumbled onto this at like an auto parts store. So, um, and it was kind of almost like either a holiday or a promotional thing that they had, but it, it makes really bright lighting. And so when you're, when you're raising poultry, it sometimes is really helpful to be able to produce a really bright light. And then other times it's helpful to um, be able to turn off that light and impose more of a darkened and dimmed 
environment. So uh, we really appreciate having that light, but it's certainly not the only kind of light out there. <laughs> but also, you know, we use these supplemental heat lamps. And, and if you put a regular bulb in this, it actually could put off just, just lighting, but we use these for supplemental heat. And with that flock coming up, we'll probably have to use we will have to use supplemental heat. So um, with 100, though, you know, we had approximately 300 chickens in this space previously that is basically like two, um, it's basically like 20 foot by 25 foot. So we won't need nearly this 20 foot by 25 foot space for 100 chickens. In fact, we'll probably start these chickens. So like if you see where there's a couple lights hanging there and a couple of lights hanging there. We'll, these are adjustable and we'll be dropping these down. And uh, <laughs> oh, it's on the four wheeler. We'll be dropping those down. And so we'll probably make like a 10 foot by 10 foot space here to start the 100 birds in. That'll be more than enough for them as chicks. And then uh, as they grow, we'll just gradually open the space up i mean we we still even have the waters in here from those birds we'll clean all those up with just water and a little bit of bleach in them and so uh, i'll show you the final numbers actually when we loaded birds we thought we were at 200 it's not focusing in on that we thought we were at 298 birds so we ended up thinking we miscounted the loose birds here on site and uh, when we got back up to the processor we had 225 in the crates and we recounted the loose birds. So we actually ended up with 296 birds. And we had said that uh, we lost 10. We know that we lost 10 birds because like we would keep track on the production board as we went, like lost a chick, turtled. Um, this one was a heart failure, lost one at noon or at the noon check we found it. Lost one, turtled, found it on the one to two p.m. check um so we know we lost 10 because we kept track of all of them and so when we got up to the processor we ended up with 296 birds so we think that maybe on the move-in end maybe we counted wrong we had ordered 300 chicks we counted 305 i bet you we had 306 we lost 10 and so we ended up not with 298 with 296 and so our production cost we kind of had down here basically we were at like six dollars and 95 cents per bird production cost um taking into consideration that was taking into consideration um the cost of the chicks the cost of feed the cost of the bedding material and some electric cost and uh we will be putting in we know we spent 75 on fuel going up taking the birds and we probably going to spend 75 on fuel again getting the poultry and uh so they'll it'll go maybe around seven dollars a bird so you know that's that's not bad and if you could if you opted to and and could feasibly make it work to just process your own birds on site and was selling them you know you you make a bigger profit margin that way we opt to take them to a usda inspected processor in fact there's federal regulation in the USA that basically implies that any chicken that is raised for commercial sale in order to sell the poultry from it, um, that it needs to be inspected during processing. There are exemptions that would allow you to raise them, process them on site and sell from that site and exempt you from inspection during processing. But we actually have many customers who tell us that it adds value to the product for them if it has been USDA inspected because actually when they go through inspection there's two opportunities for an inspector to condemn our birds and not allow them to continue through processing there's a live inspection and a carcass inspection so when you take them through a USDA inspected um, processing you you know that those birds have cleared two inspections to be allowed to be processed and then that federally inspected meat is able to be sold basically anywhere so um, so we opt for that it does about double our production cost so we'll give you final numbers on that in some follow-up videos after some time lapses but this is the day after the last day and we appreciated you joining us in the meat bird production barn 
please subscribe to Twin Oaks Farm Poultry and please keep joining us. Thank you so much. God bless.